Hey, what's going on? This has been a highly requested video. So I'm going to try to do my best to explain how to build product pages inside of Replo to replace your default theme product pages in your Shopify. So my name is Jeff. I run Daydreamers Design. We're a Shopify website and landing page agency helping Shopify brands, e-com brands to make more money building better e-commerce Shopify pages to help increase conversion rates and spend more on meta ads and just make more money with your brand. So in this video, I'm gonna just overview the build that we did inside of Replo. There's a Replo editor. Replo, by the way, is a Shopify page building, page builder app that you can get in your Shopify app store to help you guys build custom Shopify pages, whether that be your homepage, product pages, landing pages, any pages in between. You can use this, you can leverage this really powerful tool to build and design custom pages for your Shopify. So like I said, I'm gonna go over this build that we did. This is for a brand called Vegan Life Moss. You can see the homepage that we designed and built. This is all done inside Replo, as well as the product page right here. And I think we're gonna be going over the CMOS product. So we'll be going over this product right here. This is the live version, like the live page that they're running right now. And this is all built inside Replo. So I'm not gonna build it from scratch because I think that's a little waste of time. I'm just gonna go over the exact elements and the sections that we use to create this. I think that will be much more helpful for you guys just to kind of show you the, the, the in, inside, the, the back end of everything built. So real quick, we have inside the product page templates. So product templates right here. This is what you're gonna be using to link to connect your products and to create that template for the product. So this is where you're going to be replacing your default pages. So as far as like the actual build itself, just make sure that you have, you're using containers. Containers are just ways to house particular elements. You definitely don't need all of these containers here, but the main ones you need is just having one container to wrap the entire section, as well as a product element, a product block. You, you could, you get that from right here, this product element right here. Throw that in there and you can configure it and set it as, so this is dynamically set, but you can also manually set it. But in this case, we dynamically set it and we linked this particular product template to the CMOS gel product, right? So that way, whatever you see here, it's replacing their default product. So it's the domain.com slash products and then the product name, right? And then yeah, so once you have that linked, auto select all that. And you could also check this off just to make sure that the variant ID is, is set. But then as far as the actual build goes, it's super simple. You don't want to overcomplicate this. We have it as auto layout. We have a max width of 1250 pixels. This is just where if you have a big screen, you don't want to stretch it out all the way. So it, it, it's limited to a particular width. But in this case, we have the 1250 max width. You can set that by setting here, having a max width. And as far as the actual build goes, we have the images on the left. We have a thumbnail carousel, and this will, this will all be set inside the native product block component. Repl makes it super easy where you just take a lot of their native components and just, just fill in all your products, the information. But in this case, we have it dynamically set, so all the images that is set inside your Shopify backend will showcase, will, will, will be presented inside this, this carousel if you set it dynamically. You can also set it manually, of course. I'm not gonna show you, or I, I can show you that real quick. And you can set it manually by whatever product you wanna use. Let's say you wanna use this product right here. You can set that manually, but in this case, let's just set everything dynamic. Just to make it easier, because if you make any changes to your backend Shopify, it will reflect automatically. And same thing for the thumbnail, for the uh, thumbnail, see small images right here. Those are all set dynamically. So as far as the actual build goes, we have the thumbnail carousel elements and all of this again is native within the Replo. So you don't need to do much here, but just to kind of show you the back end there and the thumbnail is right underneath. So we took care of the images there. And then we also threw in, the, again, this is, this is optional. You don't need to do this, but having like a quick little review section and we do this by Having a container, we set this vertically directed downwards. We have some gaps in between each of these sections. 
So this gap between whatever sections are below. So we have container 48, which is this section right here, as well as actual review. There's a gap between those two sections. And then within container 48, we have three other elements. So we have the container 47, the name verified customer, as well as the star review. And that is set horizontally. 48 is set horizontally as well. 46 is vertically directed. Hope that makes sense. And then on the right side, we have the actual buy box section, right? So starting with the product title, oh, I mean, even before that we have the um, product review. So it's best to just link whatever review app you're using. So in this case, we have Judge Me. This is just a popular review app. You can use whatever you want, but REPL makes it super easy where you don't need to code anything. They have it all kind of set. They have the most popular apps already. If you don't see the app that you're using, you can just add in an embed HTML, I think HTML, custom code, just drag and drop that section there. And then you can just fill in whatever code you have. So just talk to your app that you're using and they will provide you the embed E M B E D D code. Just ask for the embed code. Most apps will have like a chat that you can just ask them and they're typically super helpful with whatever you need. After that, we have the product title. Again, that's set dynamically. Again, this is all linked to your Shopify backend. So whatever you set will reflect there. We have a custom sub headline as well as quick value proposition. So whether it be benefits or specific features you want to highlight, that's all done there. And just a quick overview of this, we have it set horizontally with the icon text all that, and then so on and so forth. Container 45, again, as you can guess, it's set vertically. 44 is set horizontally. And then we have some gaps as well. Product pricing, that's at dynamically. Just go to select variant, and then just scroll to whatever makes sense. In this case, we have it as um, the dynamic pri uh, display pricing without the selling discount. So it should be 44.99. Right. And then if you ever wanted to show like the compare price, you could do that as well. We just have that hidden, but in this case, maybe we can showcase a different price. So we have that hidden for now. As far as the actual buy box goes, we are leveraging tabs. So again, just don't want to select quantity. We have the options list. So in this case, sometimes this is a bit confusing. I personally get confused sometimes too, because there's a lot going on, but all you want to do is just open up the options list. Again, this is a native option here. So just picking the option list, drop down or rating buttons. But we, in this case, we have the option list. This is set as columns because we only have three. And then from here, what we want to do is just go to the current product. We have the option values that's set dynamically. So it, it'll kind of show up dynamically there. But then as far as the actual design goes, you can pretty much design whatever you want, like however you want these boxes to look feel free to do that. In this case, we have something super simple. We just have a background, some borders and all that. Real quick, you also wanna set state when it's selected just by clicking add state and then just hitting this show if this is the selected option right there, this one right here. And then, yeah, you could just, sit, again, free, free, feel free to the design however you would like. As far as the actual tab blocks, again, you have full control over however you want to set this up. In this case, we just have two options, five bottles and one. We have this as the default tab number two. As far as the actual tabs menu, we have different options. In this case, we have the first option being five quantities. We also wanna activate the states. Actually, in this case, I actually don't think we, we need that to be set because we have it as one-time purchase. So let's say, okay, let's just tell me have this. So let's say add to cart and you'll see that there's 32, 32 ounces, five, and then you also have the discount applied already. So what I'm showing might not be relevant. I'll show you this one right here. I actually don't think we have to activate state. So all we need just to keep it super simple is just the quantity selected. As far as the frequency, we're also again using tabs tab menu right here, first tab, dynamic default, second activate state, dynamic default, 
in this case here, same thing, show, and we have it as SS. So this is subscribe and save. It's just a quick note that we know when we want to activate that state, it's going to be the subscribe and save and everything else we can leave. So just real quick going over this specifically, just so you understand this. So one month, this will only show once we select the subscribe and save option. So one time it goes away, but we have it as one month, two months, six months. And then we have the add to cart. All of this is again set dynamically. So in order for you to set the buttons dynamically, you can just build it as so. So we have two, two elements within and we have add to cart. We have the dash just to seem like it's, it's like one cohesive element, but it's actually two because we want to make the pricing dynamic. This is going to be static, right? The add to cart, but the pricing is dynamic and so on and so forth. So we have the selling plan set. We have the a little quick note just to incentivize people to subscribe or at least get more than one because we want to showcase that it the best results happen after 60 days. So incentivize more quantity purchases. And then from there, we have the, the accordion drop downs afterwards there. All this is the same for mobile. And a lot of these, these sections, like these tabs are, are um, native within Replo. It does seem confusing, but it actually really isn't. If you need specific help, the Replo chat is super helpful. So it's hitting this chat right here and the team in Replo are, are really, really great at answering your questions and helping you kind of guide through that process. But again, just kind of follow this specifically. I think what's best, and this is how I kind of learned myself of just pausing, re rewinding this video back and forth, just to kind of see how you are creating all this. I'll show you this one more time, just so you, it's clear. And you can just kind of just copy this exactly as is, whether that be the tabs menu for the quantity, make sure it's tabs, tab menu. We have the first tab said, this is active, right? You, Cause we want to indicate when it is active for the customer. We have the, the interaction set on click. Same thing for the first bottle or, or one bottle. Frequency, same deal. We have tab as well. So in this case, it's like two different tab components within one. And all of this is kind of linked together through the activation states. So in this case right here, we have the one time and, and versus subscribe and save. It's all based on these activate states. You simply just hit this and then scroll down to activate state. And in this case, we'll have the, the dynamic value and then we have it as default. Same thing for here. And this is a point where you want to kind of just keep track of what you're labeling these, these, these elements just to make it easy for you guys. But yeah, from here, same thing for the second tab, activate state dynamic show. In this case, we have dynamic value and then the SS option instead of the default. The default is going to be the one time SS is just subscribe and save. And this is if you guys want to have a frequent a one time versus subscribe and save and all that. And one thing you might need is a bundle or a subscription app just to help make this work because it doesn't work natively inside Shopify. So an app that we, we like to use that you could, you'll see here is recharge is an easy subscription widget as well as stay AI. Those are two options. You don't need to use these. There's other ones as well. As long as you have it set up in the back end of um, Shopify, it'll work with Replo. But yeah. And the same thing for, for all that. If you want, I can quickly run through some of these other elements here. So we have a container, container blocks. Again, same deal, set this vertically down. We have the image and all that. We have this set up as well as everything else. Yeah, hope this helps. Um, let me know if you have any specific questions. I just think it's the most about, or um, the easiest way to learn this is just by clicking um, pause, rewind, fast forward, and trying to just copy exactly what we have here. And then kind of just figuring it out, like there's no one, one right way to do this. It's all about just what you can do based on your specific needs and then definitely ask rebel support if you have specific questions because I personally like to ask them as well just for best practices and, and all that.
yeah hope this helps and see you in the next one appreciate it peace